Sport Convention will be joining us then. And joining me now, I'm very pleased to say, is Richard Thompson himself. Richard, thanks very much for coming in. Evening, Robert. Thank you. And um, before we talk about Fairport Convention, long lost in the mists of time, I dare say, in your memory, no, no, no. Um, we've all noticed that you, there is a tribute album now out to, uh, to you, Beat the Retreat, by a number of... Um, of people who cite you as a major influence. How do you feel mm. about having a tribute album made about you? Uh, oh, I don't pay attention. Um, I don't listen to that sort of music myself. Mm. It's far too corrupt. Don't listen to pop music. Have you listened to the album? I haven't listened to it yet, no. All right. So, how, and how do you feel about it? Is it embarrassing? Is it is it ex deeply flattering? Well, I'm British, so I have to be embarrassed. You know, that's very important. Um, even if you're not embarrassed, you have to pretend to be embarrassed so oh. that um, British people will understand your point of view. So I'm definitely embarrassed, um, flattered, uh, confused. Um, but you don't want evasive. to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to listen to it. No, I do want to listen to it. but yeah, um, Haven't got round to it yet. Uh, haven't got round to it yet. It's very interesting that, that you have been so influential and so widely admired by American musicians. Because, I mean, a lot of people, I think, well, as you said yourself, think of you as a very British musician. What is it, do you think, that, that has endeared you so much to Americans? Oh, golly. Um, well, when I went to America um, in 80, I think it was 1981, and um, I hadn't really been there, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a solo performer. And uh, I was treated as a new act, uh, and I was treated as, a, as an alternative act. And um, I got onto really college radio, and that was an interesting, you know, place to start. I didn't really have much of a history. Um, whereas over here, I, I think I was thought of as, as the sort of 70s, you know, folky. Right. Um, which is a, a tough pigeonhole to get out of. Yeah. Should one want to get out of it, of course. Yeah. I'd like to get out of it, yes. And so when you went to America, they just <clears> thought you were one of these Brits who just got off the plane? I suppose that, yeah, you know, I was, you know, treated, um, you know, like Elvis Costello or, you know, um, you know R.E.M. or something. Like know. a new wave act, in fact. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that must yeah. have been interesting. How did you feel about it's being refreshing. associated with basically the generation who came after you, I suppose. I'm not sure. I realised it at the time. I, I realise it now, look, looking back, but I, I didn't realise I, I was getting played on, on college yeah. radio um, until much later. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it's good to get played anywhere. It's really hard to get on commercial radio in, in America. Um, mm. uh, there's a new format now called uh, AAA, Adult Alternative, uh, which, which caters more for people like you know me and uh, Los Lobos and John Hyatt and yeah. you, know, <coughs> sort of, uh, you know senior generation. <laughs> Uh, which is nice. <coughs> it's a more open format, in fact. Uh. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's just nice to get on anywhere. Uh. Sure. Have you met any of these people, like Bob Mould, for instance, of mm -hmm. Huskadoo and Sugar and Michael Stipe, people who've, who've played on this album? You, have, you, have you talked to them about music? I mean? um, yeah, I think in varying degrees. Um, you know, I know them in, in varying degrees. I, I, I know Peter Buck a bit from R.E.M. I don't know Michael mm. Stipe. Uh, he's a you know, very, nice, very nice guy, nice guitar player. Uh, and I know that David Hidalgo from uh, Los Angeles oh, yeah. quite well. Um, you know, the people I know well, I, I probably know Loudon Wainwright better than anybody else, you know, on that record, Martin Carthy, mm. um, with whom, you know, I'm sure I've, I've discussed, you know, music, philosophy, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite interesting because, because you, in the first place, you, your, your musical influences were quite a rich mix of sort of English folk and American sort of roots music, mm. weren't they? Yes, I think so. Um, I think you know what we were always trying to do in the early days of Fairport was, was it really to uh, hybridise music. Um, we weren't just trying to play straight traditional music. We were trying to put it with, with um, existing rock music uh, to create, you know, what, what was for us a satisfying hybrid, uh, so something you know, all the things that we liked, mm. you know, all, all the kind of musics that we liked. And which were the musics that particularly drew you in the initial um, stages? Boy, I don't know. Um, Hard to say. Um, you, you mean before, for, you know? No, uh, for around the time that you started the out. Um, of the American stars of music, we, you know, we probably listened to R&B and you know, Cajun music and uh, New Orleans music and um, you know, quite quite a broad cross section, very broad cross, cross section. Mm. And did you feel comfortable with that folk rock tag that that you lived with for the first few years? Yeah, of your I suppose career? it's sort of inevitable, really, um, that there'd be something like that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, tags are always convenient and they're always limiting, um, mm. and it's always really up to uh, up to you know other people to, to apply tags, you know, to critics and people. Um, a, a tag is fine as long as it doesn't limit you too far. And when you left Fairport Convention, were you trying to sort of redefine yourself as a musician in the eyes of the public? Or? Um, 
I think I, I was trying to write better songs. I, I think I felt, um, you know, I wasn't doing a good job or while I was with the band. Mm. And I needed to, uh, to free myself up a bit and uh, not have to write um, to order, you know, not, not have to write something that, that for the band, band to perform. That mm. I, I, really just an opportunity to, to experiment more. Yeah. Mm. And of course, personal differences. Yes, quite. Yes, never forget them. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be playing for us later on, and I've seen you a number of times <coughs> playing solo. Do you actually like just standing up on stage, just you and the guitar? Is I that where you feel most comfortable? Um, I don't feel most comfortable there, no, because um, there's nobody to blame when it goes <laughs> wrong. Uh, it, it, it's the most challenging, and I think as a musician, I, I, I feel that uh, if I can do that, that, then I've proved myself. Uh, it, it's a kind of proving for me, you know, every night to get up solo huh. and do it um, and kind of win, you know, kind of, you know, get the audience w with you. Um, it's tough and you, I think kind of crazy, actually. Uh, huh. But, it, but it's, a, it's a personal challenge. Uh, and how is your audience? I mean, you've now... How long have you been playing for now? About, well, Ooh, uh, let's see. Well, uh, perhaps we should gloss over that one. 25 years or so, yeah, something like that. Uh, how, is your, how has your audience changed, or, or, or has it changed? It must have changed over the years. Oh, it's got a lot more um, uh, multi-generational. Yeah. Um, I'm really lucky in, in that I have a very broad age range in the audience. You know, it's, it's right from, you know, sort of, you know, 14 up to about 70. Um, you know, with, with a good uh, a good bulge in the in the middle aged, sort yeah. of, you know, sort of the thirty to forty five bracket. Yeah. Um, but it's healthily um, broad, and there's some kids out there. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> and then the, you're about to go out on tour with Danny Thompson. <laughs> yes. Where and this this uh, this tour, which takes in most of England, it's just the two of you. How does that sort of duo formation come about? Oh, it's nice. Um, it started out. Just through friendship, um, we started hanging out with each other. You know, um, he's, he's a really, um, a really great friend and a, a very uh, wonderful musician. And not a member of the family or anything. Not a member of the family. Well, you know, um, we're, we're a bit like brothers. You know, without yeah. being brothers, which is probably the, the best way of doing it. Um, and he's very funny, you know, and witty and everything. So we have a good time. Um, so we were just hanging out, and, and then. Um, well, what, what we got asked to play in Italy, and we thought, well, this is great. We can start going to Italy and. Mm. Um, play a few gigs and, and spend the rest of the time sitting by the lake, which is what we did, you know, for, for a couple of years. <laughs> you know, we just pop off now and then, you know, yeah. as, as an excuse. And, um, and then uh, we decided to do some in England and some in America. Um, it, it's just uh, been a nice thing that, that's just grown, you know, we, we've developed a, a good rapper. Danny is sort of asso generally associated with jazz. Is, is that mm. um, music that you've heard, is, is that a comfortable thing for you, playing with somebody who's thought of as a jazz musician? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> with someone who's thought of as a jazz musician, um, I can't play jazz. Uh, I, I can bluff for about one chorus and, and then I, I get found out. Um, but uh, he's actually played with an incredibly wide number of people. Yeah. You know, he's played with Kate Bush, David Sylvian, um, as well as you know the Tubby Hayes Quartet and uh, uh, Stan Tracy, yeah. as well as the Piltdown Men. Yeah. And so have you, of course, because I mean, there's one particular guitar solo you do on Suzanne Vega's last album, which I was particularly fond of when when uh, heroes go down oh yeah was that all was that the bit fuzz box that one was it yes it did get fade off the sort of, uh, yeah. but do you find you get a lot of phone calls record. from people who uh, just want you to come and add a bit of guitar here and there um i do get calls which is nice better than not having calls mm. um and i get asked to do uh, actually a, a perplexing variety of, of things which i i enjoy mm. it's nice well, so it should be. Anyway, Richard, thanks very much for coming in. We very much look forward to hearing you play later. Thank you, Robert. Richard will be playing for us, as I say, a little later in the show. But first, here he is on video from the album Rumour Inside. This is I Feel So Good. And this is a song about a man who gets out of prison. And what a Catch him here first. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Richard Thompson on stage. to 
Waskets well, are wonderful, just like the snooker players have that little bit of chalk in there, you see. Got your friendly capo. the run You smell like something fresh from the tomb You squeeze too hard You insist don't kissing When it seems like half your face is missing And your lip turned into reptiles hissing And I can't wake up to save my life Oh, I can't wake up to save my life Cause I don't make my dreams go bad 
that like foster boys coming home to dad what you reap so shall you sow the feats don't fail me go man go i can't wake up to save my life oh i can't wake up to save Shaping Carpenter, Young at Heart, and One Cool Remove, our VH1 video premiere for today's show. Also making a debut on VH1, a sparky 28-year-old. Fairport Convention were formed back in 1967 and swiftly became the pioneers of a uniquely British sound fusing traditional music with rock and roll. Now here we are in 1995, and so are Fairport Convention, bearing a new album, Jewel in the Crown, and a tour, which takes up much of the next two months with no nights off. I'm very pleased to welcome now to the studio Simon Nettle to make the Ouija board of fate jump to your command in this year's Brit Awards, followed by superstar pickup band the Red Hot's version of Teach Your Children. That was recorded as part of the Red Hot series of AIDS awareness records, and by the purest coincidence, we'll be meeting a woman very much involved in that track, Kathy Matea, a little later in the show. Double bass player Danny Thompson. Yep. So that really boring sort of you know Aaron sweaters and fingers in your lug old stuff, you know. It really uh, didn't sound very appetizing. Oh baby She don't know what to do with herself in 1972, Richard Thompson launched his solo career, but despite his highly regarded work with Linda Thompson and his 1991 Grammy-nominated Rumour and Sigh, so far, popular acclaim has eluded him. The, the people who are saying that, um, you know, that I should be more famous or something, uh, don't seem to understand the way the music business works. Um, that's, that's all I can say, really, um, you know. Um, they might be qualified to make critical appraisals, but, but they're not qualified um, to, uh, uh, to understand um, the, the me mechanics of the music business, because it really doesn't work that way. You want to be liked, you know, for what you do, you know, that's inevitable. Um, you want people to like you, and it's frustrating when they don't. But sometimes it's inspiring as well. You know, um, if people don't understand what you're doing, you say, well, you know, screw them, you know, or I'll show them, or, or you know, something like that. Um, it's sort of surprising um, how often people seem to miss the point about anything that you do. Um, but then, it, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, in my nightmare you forgive me The cruelest gift you could ever give me To say that you understand me now Your eyes say, brother, I get you somehow But then the lightning streaks across the room You smell like something fresh from the tomb Clearly, a lot of people do admire Richard Thompson's craft, as a host of artists such as Bonnie Raitt, R.E.M., David Byrne, to name a few, have proved by their involvement in the tribute album, Beat the Retreat. Well, they asked me before it started if it was okay with me, and I said it was. And then it went on. I didn't have any real input into that. But um, that's great. I mean, I'm glad, you know, somebody cares. It's really nice when other people uh, do your songs. It's a really nice feeling, usually. That don't make my dreams go bad Like Boston boys coming home to dad What you reap so shall you sow The feats don't fail me Go man go I can't wake up To save my life Oh I can't wake up To save my life 
the very talented Richard Thompson there, and he's on tour in the UK right through to the end of February. And there are still further delights to be had when Capitol Records released that album, Beating the Retreat, 